there, welcome to Floating in Dreams. This video is going to be my battle of the Natasha Denona palettes. Welcome to everybody watching today. Thank you so very much for joining me. This video is going to be an overview of all of my Natasha Denona palettes and we're going to have them battle it out to see which is the best of the best one and only Natasha Denona palette. If you have that one, you don't need any of the others. That's sort of the way this video works. So let me just get to it. But before we get into the video, it may be good to know who I am and what I like doing on this channel in case you're new here. Hi, my name is Maika. I live in the Netherlands. I have fair skin with a cool to neutral undertone and this greatly influences how I feel about makeup. I have been reviewing makeup for more than a decade. I love trying eyeshadow palettes as a Catrice and getting the use out of my makeup. So if that's something you're interested in as well, I hope you'd like to consider subscribing. So Natasha Denona eyeshadow palettes and me, we have a very complicated history. The brand is one of my favorite when it comes to eyeshadow formula, but the color stories are not always up my street, which is why as I start opening up my palettes, you'll see that I have rearranged as many as I could to sort of make it more perfect for me, which is also why when I'm talking about these palettes, it's good to know that I will be talking about them in the original color stories. So I'm not talking about the way they look for me now. I'm gonna talking. I'm gonna be talking about these palettes the way I bought them. And if you were to look into buying any of these, the way they would come your way. However, I do have videos up where I do rearrange my Natasha Denona palettes. So if you want to see how I came to this configuration, then I'll make sure to link you to that video in the description box down below. I will also be including one palette I do no, no longer own because I decluttered it. So I no longer have the packaging, but again, I'll just be popping some pictures up on the screen with all of these original color stories so we can talk about them. And in case you haven't seen this video before, I did one of these in January to kick off a new series for 2024, where I wanna take brands where I have like quite a few palettes and sort of group them together and then pick a winner of that group and then have the winners of each group uh, sort of battle it out to really come to the conclusion of what is going to be the best of the best from that brand. So I am looking for some more suggestions from you guys to see if you know you have a bit of an idea of what my collection is like, because um, I do ne need to have enough palettes to be able to make groupings of at least two to three palettes so that the video concept can actually work. So uh, if I only have three palettes by the brand, I can't really sort of like do this kind of video. So that's why we're doing the, the brands I have the most by first. So if you know of any brand that I have quite a bit of that you wanna see me do next for April, then definitely let me know because then I can hopefully prioritize that and do that video again in April because that's the plan. The first grouping I wanna talk about are the larger, like first style of palette that Natasha Denona did. This was back in the day before we got any midi palettes. However, I don't think anything like the gold is still around packaging wise. These were the 129 euro dollar. I don't remember the exact price point on these, uh, but like the more expensive palettes that were there, but they weren't as expensive as, you know, the blue brown and the, what was it? Purple green, what, whatever it was like. Uh, the two larger ones and then you had the star palette which was even bigger uh, and those were super expensive and that's really what the brand started doing at first and those I didn't get at all. Um, the first palette I ever bought by Natasha Denona was the Lila and the Lila is the one that I, ha I have decluttered since then. So this one is no longer in my possession so I can't hold it up and show it to you. Um, but the uh, Lila palette was one where when I had bought it, I was like, is this what everybody is raving about? Because I was not impressed. I did not like that palette as much as the hype warranted. Let's put it that way. I didn't feel it was a bad palette, but I had heard so many people raving about Natasha Denona and saying how much they loved the brand. And I had finally made the decision to spend this much money on a Natasha Denona product. And I felt so let down by it. Like, sure, I like the formula, but not 129 euros nice. You know what I mean? So for me, the Lila palette was just a bit of a miss 
which is probably why I ended up decluttering mine. I still have some of the shades that I did like from the palette um, because there were some more special shades and there were some cooler tones and purples in one part of the palette that I did enjoy. So those I put into my singles collection because Natasha Denona, at least in some of the palettes, you can very easily take the shades out um, because they're just held in with a magnet and you can just pull them out with another magnet. Um, but I decluttered the packaging and gave it away to a friend um, because yeah, there was no use for it anymore in my collection. So in this first grouping of these more classic Natasha Denona palettes, the one I still have and that I still hold very near and dear to my heart is the gold. And I think it was the gold that really made me realize that Natasha Denona was doing something special. I'm not sure whether this was the second one I bought. I, I think I already owned the Glam and the Retro when I got this because I had such bad luck with the Lila. I was like, I'm never going to spend that much money again on the Natasha Denona palette. And I was heavily influenced by Hannah Louise Poston to buy this because it was her favorite palette for a long time. I think she decluttered hers by now, but um, I just really, really enjoy this color story and I had not expected it at first to like it as much as I did. I did put one shade from the Lila into this palette because officially the gold palette, hence the name, Micah, um, has a yellow tone gold in the middle. And my least favorite eyeshadow shade is a yellow tone gold. And that's why this palette just wasn't appealing to me at first. But then as I had both of those and the Lila pans fit into this one perfectly, I just put the, I think it was called Dragon Bite or something like that. I put that shade from the Lila into my gold palette and then I like my gold palette a lot more for sure. And this just has a lot of great neutrally browns. Now here's the thing with me and Natasha Denona and why I have rearranged so many of the color stories. As lovely as the formula is, the color stories, there's always some sort of overlap or like very, very mid-tone heavy palettes that mm, aren't always my jam. So that's why with Natasha Denona, I can understand why you would not want to purchase um, these kind of palettes from the brand because there's just not a lot of depth. Like this is literally the deepest it will go and it's not that deep. Um, and then of course we do get that darker brown here, but that's about it. I mean, it's that I put that dragon bite, dragon fruit thing in there. It still has a little bit of depth, but it's it's overall quite mid-tone. Um, I love these like tealy green sort of chromey moments that are over on this side of the palette. We get the perfect mustard yellow in here, which is another reason why I like it. Uh, Kava is one of the most beautiful shimmers on the planet. But the only thing that that's sort of like pulling this palette down a little bit is that it has one, two, three mattes that all do the same thing on my skin tone. Um, so yeah, is it a pretty palette? For sure. Is it still as unique in my collection as it once was? This still does certain things for me that I'm like, yeah, this, this still looks pretty, pretty good for me. I still like this one. Um, I will not be decluttering mine anytime soon, which is why in the classic Natasha Denona larger palette category where I only had two to begin with, the lila and the gold, the gold is going to be the winner. And here's where things get messy because I, for the longest time, had four midi sized palettes. We all know them. They have the little things in the back so you can push the shades out to create new color stories. Um, and I've rearranged all of mine for the reason I've just mentioned. As lovely as Natasha Denona formula is, the color stories aren't great. So when I start opening up the next round of palettes, you'll see that these are very much rearranged. And then in the one of the other groups, there's going to be one more rearranged palette. But I will be talking about these in this sort of hypothetical, like which is the best Natasha Denona palette battle, as if these weren't rearranged, just so you know. Um, I have in this little category, I went for the three palettes that are very similarly named, which is the Retro, the Retro Glam, and the Glam. L let's start with the Glam, which I think it was my first midi-sized palette, like the 15 pan with this like smaller packaging and the little tabs in the back. I think this was my first one, which if I open up mine, this is, this is not available. This is not for sale, but the Glam had I think they were in this corner here or in this corner here. I no longer know. There were like four warmer tones 
And then the rest of the palette were like cooler tones with like a rose gold and some taupey things, a few grays, and it was mainly shimmers. I think the entire palette only had five mattes and then everything else was a shimmer and that's what appealed to me. It essentially replaced the Urban Decay Naked 2 in my personal makeup collection because there were a lot of over, uh, overlap in the shades between those two palettes. My Naked 2 was getting really old and I wasn't reaching for it as much as I was. And the shades I was reaching for a lot in the Naked 2, I felt I could get from the Glam palette. So for the longest time, I think the Glam was like my go-to neutral palette. It's what I reached for the most and it had so many lovely shades. But then I just realized as I started buying more of these palettes from Natasha Denona, that the color stories weren't quite right for me, which is why I ended up doing this to it. Um, this definitely has some shades from the retro in. I think it also has shades in from the My Dream. I think there is still one or two shades in here from the original uh, Glam, but I think most of the shades here are retro and My Dream. I think that's what most of these shades, where most of these shades come from. And I have used these palettes with the rearranged color stories and I like my rearranged color stories much more than the originals. So I don't mind that I don't know exactly which shade is which anymore. Like if I were to take these out, I would have to like rearrange it again into what the original color st story was, which is why I'm glad I have a video where I filmed it with because I could backtrack really easily and put it back together. But I just, I haven't felt that need because I just really love my rearranged palette so much. And then I think the next one I got is the Natasha Denona Retro. And here again, this is completely rearranged. This is not what the original palette looked like. And here I have my warmer rosy tone palette, you could say now. Um, so this is again, shades from the Retro. I think there are some pinks in here from the original Retro Glam. Um, and then I think the black is actually from the My Dream. Um, so that there were some like a better mix, you could say, of all of those shades. But the original Retro, I felt was one of the best rosy tone palettes I actually have in my collection. Somebody was asking me that the other day, like if you were to go over all of your rosy tones and because this is now rearranged, I don't clock it as such anymore, but I really felt that the mixture of those like plums that it had with a couple of cool tones. And then again, like the glam, it had one little section, one little quarter, which are more like peachy rosy tones, which gave the palette a little bit more warmth, which for me personally worked really well. The glam and the retro are palettes that I still hold very near and dear to the heart, to my heart. And I think, the retro is definitely a little bit more special even till this day because it has the plummy tones with the rosy tones. And I very often feel that when we get these rosy tone palettes, it's all warmth that we get. Think of the Patrick Ta or, you know, there's a couple of these like super nice rosy tone palettes, but they skew very warm tone. And I've always appreciated how the retro actually gave us some cooler tones that lean towards more of a plum and there were even some taupey things in here so you could do a full-on neutral look without having to pull in any of the rosiness if you didn't want to which is why i think in terms of versatility i think the retro is still one of the more versatile natasha nona palettes that you can possibly get this was not the next palette i bought from the brand but because the name retro glam ties in the retro and the glam, I felt they had to go together. Now, of course, if a palette is named retro glam, what do we expect? We expect it to be a mixture of the retro and the glam, and this isn't. Because, as you will see in a minute, there is a mini palette called the mini retro that had greens in. And everybody had been wanting this to be a larger version when the retro actually came out to have those sagey greens in, you could say. Um, and I reorganized mine um, to make it a full on cool tone neutral color story with the cooler tone greens from the original Retro Glam. So this has a lot of Retro Glam shades in, but then I did pull in some of the cooler tones from the actual Glam, and I think maybe one or two shades from the uh, Retro. I think most of them are from the Retro Glam, the Glam, I think though. Uh, to make a perfect cooler toned color story with those cool tone greens in the middle. But this of course had some cool tone greens, cool toned taupey leaning neutrals, 
and pops of pink and the pink made it warm toned because all of the pinks that originally came in this color story were more warm toned leaning. And as much hype as this got upon release, because everybody was waiting for this palette to happen, to have like the pinky tones with the greens with those cooler tone neutrals, I think this palette kind of like, it was just a little too late, you could say. I think that if this had been the actual retro palette, it would have been truly revolutionary, but the, one of the reasons why I realized I could like rearrange these color stories was the purchase of the Retro Glam, because it is not a unique color story if you were to buy this um, at face value. So not my rearranged version, but the version you can get in store. Um, Lime Crime Venus XL2, which nobody likes apart from me, but it essentially has the same kind of shades. And when this palette came in for me, I did a couple of shorts where I did some comparative swatches and I just felt because the Lime Crime is 18 shades and it has some warm tone neutrals in that this palette doesn't have. So especially if you are more into your warm tones than the actual v Lime Crime Venus XL 2, which has been on the market for years, way before this ever launched, gave you this look that you can achieve with the original Retro Glam. Um, I think A, more affordable, B, you get more shades, and C, the quality is similar. So I really don't think that I needed this in my life per se, and that when I had that color story, I just realized that as much as I like that color story, I already have a palette that does it, so I didn't need to keep this in the original arrangement it was in which is why I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna rearrange it and see what happens. And this is my main reason for not wanting to put back the glam, um, like putting the shades back into the glam because this is just really, really perfect. And if this could have been the actual retro glam, I would have liked it a lot better. So of these three, because this is our little pairing for um, the next selection we need to take, I think the color story of the retro is the one that I would recommend if you were looking into getting any of these three because it has the rosy mauve tones, because it has some more unique shades. It's got the sparkly toppers that Natasha Denona is now known for. It does also have a couple of those creamy mattes, which I think they started doing when they released the retro, which is one of my favorite formulas from Natasha Denona, to be quite fair. And it just gives you a little bit of everything. It has the textures I like, it has the shades I like, and it's not too cool tone that depending on wherever you are in the spectrum, the retro is gonna see you through. So the retro here is my favorite pick and that's the one that goes on to the next round. And our next grouping, our next category are these three guys. I have three of the mini palettes, that's it. I know some people collect these and they have all of them, but I only tend to buy these if I find the color story to be something that really is unique in my makeup collection and I don't feel I can get anywhere else, which for a lot of the minis, because they're like mini versions or like a little family together with a midi or even a larger palette that they did or that they now have, um, they very often, I feel, uh, give you a a pretty good idea of what Natasha Denona can do if you've never tried the brand, and these go on sale quicker as well. So I feel that this is a really smart move to have these kind of palettes on behalf of the brand because it's a great entryway for people to get to know the brand and to see what the quality is like. These aren't removable though. If these also had removable pans, I would have buy so many, I would buy so many more of these. The mini Starlet is one that I still eye up every single time I, I'm in a store that stocks Natasha Denona. Like, oh, that's pretty, but it's got so many warm tones and it doesn't look like something that's going to be unique in my personal makeup collection, which is why I'm passing it up all the time. But I feel the ones that I have here are quite unique. So I think the first one I got is the Mini Love, which I think has been discontinued. The bigger Love palette was never my vibe because it's pinks and purples, which is not really my thing. But this is essentially a pinky mauve with a plum, and then we have the champagne shade, this peachy pink, and this really pretty chromey kind of shade that has like a peachy gold sort of flip. Um, and it goes really well together. This is the kind of thing that I felt I can still get away with. 
However, because these have different backgrounds, I do feel that very often with Natasha Denona palettes, you can sort of feel duped once you pull out of the shades out and you sort of put them towards like uh, on a neutral background, you can really start seeing that the color differences just aren't really there. But yeah, the love I bought because I don't have much of anything that is like this in my makeup collection. Do I use this a whole lot? No, because this has made me realize why I don't reach for purps, purples and pinks all that often. So the mini love, as lovely as it is and unique it is in my collection, and the lovely quality, it doesn't get the most use. I think the next one I got is the original Natasha Denona Retro Mini. Um, and here we see what the inspiration was actually for the original Retro Glam. Um, we have those sagey greens, which everybody loves. We get this really pretty, more sparkly sort of top coat. And then these two peachy pinks, which are a little bit warm toned, more warm toned, I would say, than some of the neutrals that you get if you buy the larger size of the Retro Glam, which I don't feel they go together perfectly. But this is still unique in my makeup collection. I like those sagey greens with the, with the peachy pinks. It's very soft, it's very wearable. And for how few shades you get, you can do a lot of looks with this because you could do a full on green look. You can do like a very neutral look. You can add a bit, of, a bit more sparkle for that more glam moment. And if you combine all five shades, you can definitely take it to another level as well. So this has a lot of options, more so I feel than the mini love. With the mini love, I feel I can only like do like two looks with it really. Whereas with this, I feel because of the shades you get, there are endless options, even though it's only five shades. The final one I got is I feel the most unique of the three, and this is the mini Zendo. Again, the larger Zendo wasn't one I was interested in. It was incredibly warm toned. It did have those pops of like blues and greens, if I'm not mistaken. So those were still appealing to me because if I go for a warm tone, I like contrasting it with like a tealy green shade. So. The Zendo, I definitely eyed up for a moment, but I knew that I wasn't going to be able to make it work. And then they did this, of course. And I do really like this one for sure. It's got some pretty unique shades. I like this like grayish tone that it has. It has a hint of green to it though. So it's not a full on silver, which makes it a bit more unique. You get like a darker plum in here, something to blend things out. And then you just get these like warmer tones towards the end. I feel that this bridges the gap for me between the mini love and the mini retro. Um, because if I, can I do this that I, without dropping things? Like I feel that this sort of like, like that silver and these peachy tones go with the retro and then the plum and the pink with the silver go really nicely with the mini love as well. So I feel together, they even work together very well too, which is not something I had anticipated. And this was so much prettier on my skin tone than I had expected when I got it in. This definitely is more unique in my makeup collection, which is why my favorite, which is why it's my favorite of the three. So to be quite fair, if I have to choose one of these to go on to the next round uh, of the three mini palettes I have here, I'm going to opt for the Zendo because I think that one is the most unique in my personal makeup collection, which was very unexpected. And I love it when an eyeshadow palette surprises me, which brings me to our final grouping, which has uh, some of my more recent purchases from the brand. So the final rearranged palette I have here was actually purchased before I bought the Retro Glam. It's the My Dream palette. Again, mine looks very different from what the original looked like because in here you I just threw in all of the warmer tone shades and like I think this is actually from the retro this like pinky gold uh sparkly thing but yeah this is just your average neutral palette and that's one of the things that I like liked and disliked about the my dream this is one that, where I really had to give it a good think to see if I even wanted it. And this is the one where I kind of feel I could, I was probably better off not purchasing this at the end of the day. Was I able to pull some stunning looks out of this? Yes, for sure. This is a very neutral palette with incredibly great saturation. So this definitely has some of the darker shades that you will have seen in the other palettes. Those all came for this. It has a full on black, it has some deeper things, which a lot of the other palettes are lacking in the actual grander scheme of things. When I reviewed this, if I remember collect correctly, I said that the My Dream is the neutral palette for people with medium to deep skin, 
For my fair skin, it was a little too OTT, a little too over the top, where I felt it just looked very glam very quickly, which, you know, isn't always my vibe, but I was able to pull some stunning looks out of it, and I could really appreciate those shades individually. So again, together with the Retro Glam, this palette was the instigation for me to rearrange those color stories, because I could see that if I were to rearrange things, things could just look a lot better. Um, the shade in the middle here I know is from the original My Dream, and this is one shade because I don't look good in orange, let me tell you. Like, an orange shade on me is not great, but this has a really nice quality to it that is just really sparkly, and I just went with everything. And I think... I think some of these things are actually like the rosy tones from the retro in there as well. Uh, I think this may actually be from the glam. It's like the warmer tone from the glam. And then this gold is also from the Glam, I believe. So it definitely has a mix of shades in here. I kind of threw all of the warmer tone neutrals that didn't fit into any of the palettes into this one. And it works really well as a color story. But I know I will not be using this one the most because these are like my least favorite shades to wear. Like, I just prefer cool tones on myself over a warm tone, even though these shades now work for me really, really well. And I believe the original also has a multi-chrome in um, I put that with the, um, like, in the retro, I think, or in the glam? In the glam. Hold on. In the glam. It's right here. This is the multi-chrome that's in the original My Dream, and there's a black in the My Dream as well. And then we have my latest purchases. The one I got first of these is the I Need a Nude. I actually got them together uh, from Cull Beauty uh, through uh, the Black Friday sales, which a lot of people were saying I could not get a deal on Natasha Denona. And it was true because if you just went onto the website, it didn't work. But I had a code in my email. And if I used the link that was in the email, I could get money off off of Natasha Denona. So that's how I ended up purchasing these because I knew because I had tried so many other palettes and felt a bit iffy about them. I was like, I don't want to pay full price for Natasha Denona anymore. So I'm going to wait for a sale. And I was glad that I got my hands on the I Need a Nude in the sale. So this is still in the original layout. I didn't mess around with this. And when I tried this, I was like, yes, I think I have found my new favorite neutral palette because this is close to perfection. Um, it has some warms, um, mainly here for me, these two peachy shades, and a lot of people are saying this, but here's the thing. On my skin tone, these things pull pink. It works so well for me, and then you just get a lot of neutral to cooler tone leaning shades, and it's so rare that we get a neutral tone palette that is a true, true neutral tone palette, rather than it being cool toned or warm toned. I feel that we usually just get two things. We get a lot of warmth, that's like 75, maybe 85% of all the eyeshadow palettes we get if their neutrals are warm toned neutral eyeshadow palettes, with perhaps like a cool tone thrown in just, just to be a bit more inclusive. Then we get like 10 to maybe 20% of palettes that are, you know, your cooler tone palettes, and then I feel like the there's only like 5% of true actual neutral tone palettes. This doesn't skew overly cool toned. It doesn't skew overly warm toned. The only thing you need to know about it is that it's light. It's For my skin tone, this is perfect. If you have deeper skin, you're not going to have a good time with this one. Let me tell you. Um, something like the gold is going to work better if you have darker skin, I think. Uh, if you have a deeper skin tone. But for me, this was just perfect because... I get the depth I need in like this bronzy shade and this deeper matte. I get exactly what I need and then I just have like your taupey bronzy things that really pull it together. I get enough like blend shades to make anything work in the crease. I have something that is a liner. I get the sparkly toppery things that I appreciate Natasha Denona doing. So this can just really go into so many different ways for me and that's why this one is definitely a favorite in my entire makeup collection. But then together with the I Need a Nude, I purchased the Xenon palette. So the Xenon palette from Natasha Denona. I wanted to try because everybody was hating on this and saying how ashy it was and gray toned. And I'm like, yeah, it is a very gray heavy palette, but I have uh, a very light skin tone. And on me, the bluey and the pinky undertones, especially in this middle row, 
they show up to me. I can see them. I can see them on my skin tone. And that's one of the things I like. It's just, I'm just not a huge fan of blue tone grays. I feel it's a little too sort of like standard. And even though it's perfect for some people, I feel this kind of pulls towards the kind of grays I don't like. So because I have this, I was like, maybe if I have the scene on and the I need a nude, I might want to mess it up and like rearrange those two color stories to um, have them be like the other ones that I just showed you. Uh, this one is also still in the original layout. And my main issue with this palette is that I don't have anything apart from this that can work for me in the crease. So all the looks turn to be a gray because I only get a green, a, a gray crease shade. Um, so I would have liked this shade to be a little bit deeper or maybe have this shade not in here um, and have it be replaced by a taupey brown shade that is this shade and then this sh this palette would be so much better for me. Which is why I'm like part of me still wants to rearrange these but because these are just new in and I've only been using them for the past few months I don't feel that need yet but I definitely think future me will want to rearrange especially this one and I will be putting it together with the I Need a Nude or maybe I'm going to take all six of these midi palettes and give it a complete rejig. I'm not sure yet how I'm going to do it. This has some really pretty shades though but I would want to pull in other things for me to make it like perfect from like having a good crease shade etc etc. But yeah this blue tone shows up on me. This blue tone shows up. Um, here I get a little bit more of a bluer undertone. This pulls pink on me. Um, and I really, really like this shade here at the bottom. So um, does it have pretty shades? Yes, did I have fun playing with this for sure. But of these three, the I Need a Nude is the one that needs to go on to the next round. Which brings me to the actual battle part of this video. And I thought that from round one, we could take the gold, which was the winner there. And from round three, we could take the mini Zendo to have those go up against each other. And there is no match here, of course, because the gold is going to go on to the next round. As much as I like this, I feel I can just do more with the gold than I can do with the mini Zendo. Not just, not just because it's bigger, but also because these shades just work better for me. They just do. Um, so that's why the gold is going to the final round. And then to battle it out from rounds two, I have the retro. And from round four, I have the I need a nude. And... The toss up is so like, there's really like, this was a difficult decision to take because I love my retro and I love the shades that were in the original retro. And I still don't regret re like rearranging it at all. I really, really don't. But I feel that because I don't even feel the need to rearrange the I need a nude. And because it's such a good neutral palette for me, this is the one that I feel needs to move into the next, into the next round um, because not only because it's newer but because it just truly truly wowed me so many people warned me for the I need a nude before I purchased it saying oh it's not cool tone and I know you love cool tones and then I tried it and I was like guys this is an actual neutral palette nobody told me that nobody was talking about how this was like an actual neutral palette and that's why I feel that has to go because I just feel we don't see that enough from brands which leads me to the final round which is the gold versus the I need a nude, my original favorite from the brand, because the gold has been a long-standing top, top favorite eyeshadow palette in my makeup collection. It's no longer av available. There are so many rumors about this coming back as a 15 pan palette though. There are so many rumors, which I hope they're true and that we get a color story that is like this. Um, but that palette, even though it was like, listed as being discontinued. It was then still available through the Natasha Denona website. So no clue where the gold is going. But since that one is also one you can no longer buy, I think the top, top point, the top spot of all of my Natasha Denona palettes has to go to the I Need a Nude. Because when I tried this last January, I was blown away. So the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude is going to be crowned as king of the Natasha Denona eyeshadow palettes. If you get just one Natasha Denona palette and you have my skin tone, try this. If you have warm skin, try the gold. If you want rosy tones, try the retro. 
I think I think that's sort of the conclusion here. That would be like my top three. Like if this was like the Olympic Games of eyeshadow palettes, then this gets the gold medal, and then the gold palette would get the silver medal, and the retro would get the bronze medal. That's the way I feel about these now. So yeah, I need a nude. I was just blown away by how perfect this was as a neutral palette. Is this color story super revolutionary in my makeup collection? As you know, if you saw my review, I also tried the Be Perfect Gravity palette. So if Natasha Denona is too pricey for you, know there are now affordable brands that do things that are similar to this. I also really love the Gloss Gots New Neutrals Remix palette, which I feel also has quite similar shades in with even some multi-chromes thrown in. So if you like indie eyeshadow quality, you may want to look into that. And if you like more luxury things and you want something that has a bit more warmth than this has, and it has a bit more contrast, then the Makeup by Mario Ethereal Alice palette will definitely give you that as well. So there are loads of palettes like this on the market that do something similarly, but they're all different. I feel. That's just me. I just love my neutrals. We all know that. So yeah, Natasha Nenona, I Need a Nude is the winner here. So I really hope you enjoyed watching this video today. Thumbs up this video if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more by me. And remember, leave me in a comment down below what palettes you would like to see me next. What brand do you want me to do a battle of the palettes with? Because I have plenty, plenty of eyeshadow palette brands where I have enough to do this kind of video. My eyeshadow palette declutter video is coming next week. I think by the end of this week, you will have seen that. So definitely watch that video to see what brands I have multiple palettes by, because I think I need, I need at least eight for me to like do a video like this, I think. But yeah, thank you so very much for joining me today. Thumbs it up if you liked it, and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye-bye. <music>